If you've ever thought about doing some real cruising in real conditions out in the very real ocean, you've undoubtedly come across the name Island Packet, a boat manufacturer with an almost cult-like following, but for good reason. This week we're going behind the curtain on Island Packet, the one that people are choosing to get the job done, the cutter-rigged, two-bedroom, ocean-rated, rock-solid 38-footer that feels like a 40, the 370. Let's start by admitting the obvious here. This is not a cookie cutter production boat. Island Packet doesn't make those. Bob Johnson started the company in 1979 to specifically make blue water boats. And we won't dig into the weeds on what makes a boat blue water specifically, but suffice it to say, to be blue water, it has to be ocean worthy. So it should be overbuilt, heavy chain plates and rigging, glasswork thicker than the average sailboat, bulkhead tabbing and stringers beyond what's simply necessary. A boat that can and will take care of you if the time comes where you can't take care of yourself. Island Packet marches to the beat of its own drum. It always has. They make long keels. They like cutter rigs that give you a sail plan while all the other guys just give you two sails. Island Packet gives you the ability to adapt the sail plan to suit the weather. While the other guys expect you to avoid or run from trouble, Island Packet gives you the option to sail right through it. Island Packet makes sailboats for sailors, proper blue water ocean sailors, and that's not all that differentiates these boats. So does the price. To illustrate that, here's a 2005 Beneteau 373. That's all kitted out with some sunbrella enclosures and solar panels. It's for sale in Florida for 110 grand. And here is an island packet, the same size boat, the same sunbrella enclosures, and kitted out in the same manner for 239,000. But on a closer look, there are some hints in this picture as to why. From the bow, we see a beefy stainless double anchor roller. So you can carry two primary anchors and behind them is room for 300 feet of chain. And behind the roller furling head sail, we get a second roller furling sail. And behind that, we get a boom for that second sail. This is interesting. Island Packet gives us two head sails to use, which means they expect us to be going from a nice leisurely sail in less than 10 knots of wind to riding out a 50 knot storm on the ocean with this boat. Let's keep looking. We follow back the full length stainless handrails and note the stainless hoops protecting the door raids, an overbuilt rig that's a size too big for the boat backed up inside by a 54 horsepower Yanmar, again, likely a size bigger than this boat actually needs. We start to see fairly quickly what Island Packet is all about here, but it doesn't end. Where the white plastic boat was about 15,000 pounds, this Island Packet is 21,000. Where the other boats have a fin keel and charge along happily at well over seven knots, the Island Packet has a long keel, shallow, but long enough to hang a rudder off the back to protect the prop from damage too. It's important to understand that while Island Packet builds ocean going blue water boats, they don't build round the mark race boats. This was never intended to be fast. It's safe, it's reliable, it's solid, and it'll charge along all day at about six knots. That long keel only needs a little over four and a half feet of water too, but there's so much of it. You won't be pointing as high as your neighbor on the Beneteau, but you also won't be running away from any weather. You'll just reduce sail, spill a little bit of wind, clip in, and put your feet up to enjoy a meal while the boat sails right through the bad stuff. Island Packet has been doing this recipe for decades and along with the Halberg Razzies and the Hans Christians, they are extremely good at it. But that doesn't mean it's not refined. It hasn't stopped evolving. There's a joke on the internet about Lamborghinis that comes to mind for me. It's this meme. Lambos don't even have Lambo doors anymore. It's kind of funny, but they've evolved and in the same way, so has Island Packet by way of the sugar scoop. 
Island Packet has always been a boat that's crossed oceans. We all know that. No fancy gadgets, no gimmicks, because they didn't need any. It was a no-compromise battleship for the North Atlantic or a Pacific crossing. But now, with the 370 and some of the other newer models, they've given us a sugar scoop. And that's mighty big of them, changing the recipe ever so slightly to give us more than what they already gave us. And they do weird things inside too. Did you know that these boats come with messenger lines? Basically, the factory ran strings through the electrical conduits and left them there so that you, as the new owner, might want to install more electrical gadgets. You can use the messenger strings to pull more wires through the conduit. That's nice. It makes us feel all warm and fuzzy. On the 370, they also give us a nice sea-going galley that we can actually use at sea. And while we have to make do with just one head, they give us two doors. So it's a part of the main saloon during the day, but it's also part of the master suite up in the front. With all this new luxury accommodation though, they've done it without losing what makes them them. The cockpit is still tight. It's hard to fit 10 people in, but more importantly, it's hard to fall out of. The galley is tight too, but hard to fall over in. The deck is tight with the jib boom and it kind of takes up a lot of space. It's hard to navigate, but 100% functional. Everything has a purpose and that purpose is to get you where you're going safely. We talked to a bunch of owners of the 372 and have some real life feedback from people out there using this boat today. But before we get to that, can you take a second to subscribe to this channel and give this video a thumbs up if you like it. Practical Sailor is new to YouTube and we're really looking forward to bringing you more content and you can help by engaging with us here on YouTube. Linda, who is living with her husband on a 370 right now as we speak in the Bahamas, told me how much they love their island packet. He's 71 years old and they're out there doing the thing we all dream of right now in this moment. One of the biggest reasons for them paying more for an island packet was safety and stability. All of the owners we talked to said the same. It barely ever even heals over. It feels like concrete underfoot. And it doesn't bounce around or get uncomfortable, regardless of the sea state. They added that having a second jib, they used the storm sail to stabilize the boat even when they're motoring. They came down the ICW and having a little bit of canvas up while motoring made it even more comfortable. All the owners remarked about the head that is much more roomy than other boats of the same size and the separate shower was a big improvement over having a wet head. Also, everyone loves the bow thruster. Backing this boat up because of its full keel, it doesn't really want to turn. So they just pop it in reverse, give it some revs and then use the bow thruster to steer the boat. And while the bow thruster was optional from the factory, they said it is a must have. Also an option from the factory was the in-mast furling. From the Island Packet brochure, when they sold this boat brand new, you could pay extra for a standard main with slab reefing, but most folks didn't. And they love the ease of use of having a furling mainsail. You pull a string and it's deployed, you pull another one and it goes away. The upwind sailing and peak efficiency is hurt by the furling main. All the owners admit that, but they didn't buy this boat to be competitive on a race course anyway. They bought it to get there reliably and comfortably. And having two backstays and two bilge pubs from the factory was much more important to them than rounding the marks at a Thursday night club race. While the boat easily carries a 35 pound anchor on the roller, it is all too comfortable with a 55 pound that most people seem to use. One owner had a Rockna and the other had a Mantis, an interesting food for thought on that never ending debate about anchors. And I didn't think of this as a Rockna owner myself, but apparently the welded Rockna design is actually an improvement over the Mantis bolt together arrangement. This is because the bolts actually attract and trap more debris when hoisting the anchor in the messy Chesapeake or ICW. The Mantis is harder to keep cleaned. Interesting. Another interesting thing we learned, this being a 370, it is just 38 feet long and some insurance companies actually took issue with that. Linda was telling me that their insurance said due to the increased storms and hurricanes over the last decade or so, they're much more comfortable with people buying bigger boats. Because the 370 is under 40 feet, it's a red flag for some insurance. They were able to get insured, but was a bit of a challenge. 
Linda and her husband picked their 370 up for 185,000 in Maryland, and after taking part in a $100,000 refit, their 2006 model has now been valued in a survey at 235. You never get back what you put into a boat. Island packets are known though to hold their value like almost nothing else. But while they are hard to really lose a lot of money on over the years, remember the market you're selling to is actually a little bit smaller. It's easy to sell a white plastic boat, but many less people are actually shopping for a blue water battleship. But of course, every sailboat is a compromise and owners had a few of the same complaints. While they love the oversized Yanmar in the 370, it's deep down in the hull, so access to impellers and oil changes can be a bit more tricky. Island Packet does everything they can to make it easier, but it's a hard location to contend with. Though that monster of an engine being low in the hull means better weight distribution and more comfortable sailing. Most owners admit that while the cockpit is tight and safe, it does come up a bit smaller when you actually start living on this boat. It's a bit tight. And being up there in age really highlights how hard it can be to get out from behind the wheel while you're underway. You can't just step around the helm on this boat. You have to step onto the lazarette and then back down. A twin helm like a newer boat would have been nice, but Island Packet is known for its legendary rack and pinion steering that is as close to bulletproof as you can get. So complicating it with a second helm just wouldn't be a very island packety thing to do. Another complaint, while the teak work makes the boat look like a million bucks when it's all shined up, it is a pain to keep up with. An option for less teak would have been nice. And the fridge, it's a fridge freezer top loader and Linda points out that somebody over at Island Packet must be pretty tall because she can't reach very far inside. It's just too deep and too high up. A front door would have been an improvement and maybe a second door for the freezer. Right now, the same door opens the freezer and fridge compartment, so every time they grab a beer, they're letting some heat into the freezer. They've put a thermal blanket over the freezer section to help. Craig, an owner of a 2005 Model 370 up on the Great Lakes, is headed south soon and sent us some awesome pictures of the amazing arch that he had made for us to be able to see how much solar you can really fit on this boat and commented about how easy it is to mount an arch to the boat. The combings and gunnels lend themselves very well to an arch with davits on it if you want to have one made. And the last thing that people mentioned was the master cabin. Being an island bed is amazing, but being up in the front is not. If you find yourself in a rough anchorage, which you will, the peak of the boat is a bad place to try to sleep. It bounces up and down a lot, even on an island pack, and owners find themselves sometimes having to move to the tighter aft cabin. From a practical standpoint, we love this boat. It's a proper blue water cruiser, and Island Packet is one of the last companies still making stuff like this in a world of white plastic twin helms. We admit they are expensive, but one of the deepest and most helpful owners associations in the world stands behind this boat, and some of the best resale values around, and a boat that will genuinely save your life if the time comes. It makes that price tag seem to make a lot more sense than it would at first glance. Don't forget to subscribe and if you would, leave a comment. What would you like to see in the Practical Sailor magazine and what video should we do next? Also, for full access to everything Practical Sailor has to offer, and it's a lot, don't forget to subscribe on our website.